Chapter Seventeen of Poison Romance and Poison Mysteries by Charles John Samuel Thompson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Seventeen: Hashish and Hashish Eaters. Hashish or bang is the native term applied to the dried flowering tops of the Indian hemp from which the rosin has not been removed. This plant cultivated largely in india is now considered to be the same botanically as the cannabis sativa of european cultivation but there is great difference in their medicinal activity that growing in india being much more powerful ganja is the native name for part of the plant and sidi for another part which is much poorer in rosin the rosinous principle is called churus or charus and the entire plant cut during inflorescence dried in the sun and pressed into bundles is called bang the method of using it in india is chiefly for smoking in combination with tobacco for this purpose a plug of tobacco is first placed in the bottom of the bowl of the pipe on the top a small piece of hashish and over this a piece of glowing charcoal another way is to knead the drug with the tobacco by the thumb of one hand working in the palm of the other till they are thoroughly incorporated simple infusions of the leaves and flowering tops are also much used for drinking purposes by old and young in india the alcoholic form being a most active and dangerous intoxicant the antiquity of the drug is great, and it is said to have been used in China as early as the year 220 to produce insensibility when performing operations. The Persians employed it in the Middle Ages for the purpose of exciting the pugnacity and fanaticism of the soldiers during the wars of the Crusades. In 1803, Baizy, a French scientist, published a memoir on hashish and attempted to prove that it was the nepenthe of Homer. There is little doubt, however, that the use of the drug was known to Galen. Sylvestin de Lacy contends that the word assassin is derived from hashashin, a name given to a wild sect of Mohammedans who committed murder under its influence the chinese herbal raya which dates from about the fifth century b c notices the fact that the hemp plant is of two kinds the one producing seeds and the other flowers only herodotus states that hemp grows in scythia both wild and cultivated and that the thracians made garments from it which can hardly be distinguished from linen he also describes how the scythians exposed themselves as in a bath to the vapour of the seeds thrown on hot coals the hemp occurs in two principal forms viz one bang consisting of the dried leaves and small stalks of a dark green colour mixed with a few fruits it has a peculiar odour but little taste mixed with flour or incorporated with sweetmeat it is called hashish it is also smoked or taken infused in cold water two ganja consists of the flowering shoots of the female plant having a compound or glutinous appearance and is brownish green in color of the many curious experiences that have been written describing the effects of hashish perhaps the most accurate is that given by gautier in which he relates his own experience of the drug the orientalists he states have in consequence of the interdiction of wine sought that species of excitement which the western nations derive from alcoholic drinks he then proceeds to state how a few minutes after swallowing some of the preparation a sudden overwhelming sensation took possession of him it appeared to him that his body was dissolved and that he had become transparent he clearly saw in his stomach the hashish he had swallowed under the form of an emerald from which a thousand little sparks issued his eyelashes were lengthened out indefinitely and rolled like threads of gold around ivory balls which turned with inconceivable rapidity around him were sparklings of precious stones of all colours changes eternally produced like the play of a kaleidoscope 
he every now and then saw his friends who were around him disfigured as half men half plants some having the wings of the ostrich which they were constantly shaking so strange were these that he burst into fits of laughter and to join in the apparent ridiculousness of the affair he began by throwing the cushions in the air catching and turning them with the rapidity of an indian juggler one gentleman spoke to him in italian which the hashish transposed into spanish after a few minutes he recovered his habitual calmness without any bad effect and only with feelings of astonishment at what had passed half an hour had scarcely elapsed before he again fell under the influence of the drug on this occasion the vision was more complicated and extraordinary in the air there were millions of butterflies confusedly luminous shaking their wings like fans gigantic flowers with calyxes of crystal large peonies upon beds of gold and silver rose and surrounded him with the crackling sound that accompanies the explosion in the air of fireworks his hearing acquired new power it was enormously developed he heard the noise of colors green red blue yellow sounds reached him in waves a glass thrown down the creaking of a sofa a word pronounced low vibrated and rolled within him like peals of thunder his own voice sounded so loud that he feared to speak lest he should knock down the walls or explode like a rocket more than five hundred clocks struck the hour with fleeting silvery voice and every object touched gave a note like the harmonica or the aeolian harp he swam in an ocean of sound where floated like isles of light some of the airs of lucia di lammermoor and the barber of seville never did the similar bliss overwhelm him with its waves he was lost in a wilderness of sweets he was not himself he was relieved from consciousness that feeling which always pervades the mind and for the first time he comprehended what might be the state of elementary beings of angels of souls separated from the body all his system seemed infected with the fantastic colouring in which he was plunged sounds perfume light reached him only by minute rays in the midst of which he heard mystic currents whistling along according to his calculation this state lasted about three hundred years for the sensations were so numerous and so hurried one upon the other that a real appreciation of time was impossible the paroxysm over he was aware that it had only lasted a quarter of an hour another interesting account of the strange hallucinations produced by the drug is related by dr moreau who with two friends experimented with hashish at first he states i thought my companions were less influenced by the drug than myself then as the effect increased i fancied that the person who had brought me the dose had given me some of more active quality this i thought to myself was an imprudence and the involuntary idea presented itself that i might be poisoned the idea became fixed i called out loudly to dr roche you are an assassin you have poisoned me this was received with shouts of laughter and my lamentations excited mirth i struggled for some time against the thought but the greater the effort the more completely did it overcome me till at last it took full possession of my mind the extravagant conviction now came uppermost that i was dead and upon the point of being buried my soul had left my body in a few minutes i had gone through all the stages of delirium these fixed ideas and erroneous convictions are apt to be produced but they only last a few seconds unless there is any actual physical disorder the orientalist when he indulges in hashish retires into the depth of his harem no one is then admitted who cannot contribute to his enjoyment he surrounds himself with his dancing girls who perform their graceful evolutions before him to the sound of music 
gradually a new condition of the brain allows a series of illusions arising from the external senses to present themselves the mind becomes overpowered by the brilliancy of gorgeous visions discrimination comparison reason yield up their throne to dreams and phantoms which exhilarate and delight the mind tries to understand what is the cause of the new delight but it is in vain it seems to know there is no reality hardly two people experience the same effects from hashish upon some it has little action while upon others especially women it exerts extraordinary power while one person says he imagined his body endowed with such elasticity that he fancied he could enter into a bottle and remain there at his ease another fancied he had become the piston of a steam-engine under the influence of the drug the ear lends itself more to the illusion than any other sense its first effect is one of intense exhilaration, almost amounting to delirium. Power of thought is soon lost, and the victim laughs, cries, and sings or dances, all the time imagining he is acting rationally. The second stage is one of dreamy enjoyment, followed by a dead stupor. Of the ordinary physical effects of hashish, the first is a feeling of slight compression of the temporal bones and upper parts of the head. The respiration is gentle, the pulse is increased, and a gentle heat is felt all over the surface of the body. There is a sense of weight about the forepart of the arms, and an occasional slight involuntary motion, as if to seek relief from it. There is a feeling of discomfort about the extremities, creating a feeling of uneasiness, and if the dose has been too large, the usual symptoms of poisoning by Indian hemp show themselves. Flushes of heat seemed to ascend to the head, even to the brain, which create considerable alarm. Singing in the ears is complained of then comes on a state of anxiety almost of anguish with a sense of constriction about the chest the individual fancies he hears the beating of his heart with unaccustomed loudness but throughout the whole period it is the nervous system that is affected and in this way the drug differs materially from opium whose action on the muscular and digestive systems is most marked it is somewhat remarkable that Indian hemp fails to produce the same intoxicating effects in this country that it does in warmer climates, and whether this is due to the loss of some volatile principle or difference in temperature, it is not yet determined. But would-be experimentalists in the effects of hashish would do well to remember that it may not be indulged in with impunity and most authorities agree that the brain becomes eventually disordered with frequent indulgence in the drug, even in India. It further becomes weakened and incapable of separating the true from the false. Frequent intoxication leads to a condition of delirium, and usually of a dangerous nature. The moral nature becomes numbed, and the victim at last becomes unfit to pursue his ordinary avocation. It is stated by those who have considerable experience in its use that even during the dream of joy there is a consciousness that all is illusion. There is at no period a belief that anything that dances before the senses or plays upon the imagination is real, and that when the mind recovers its equilibrium it knows that all is but a phantasm. End of chapter 17